on this next elimination problem, another commonly missed one from module five's assignment on elimination, we start out with 10x equals 25 plus 5y, 10x plus 8y equals 12. Now this time, as I go through the steps for solving and you're making the corrections on your notes from your assignment from last week, I want you to pause the video when I ask a question, answer the question out loud as if I'm with you live at your computer and then hit play and see if you got it right. Okay, so what would you have to do in step number one? Go ahead and read step number one on the left to yourself and tell me what would need to be done under step number one. Go ahead and hit pause. Okay, if you said, put the first equation 10x equals 25 plus 5y in standard form, then give yourself a pat on the back. That is absolutely right. So I'm gonna go ahead out to the side here. I'm gonna rewrite that equation, 10x equals 25 plus 5y. So because it is not in standard form, I need the Y on the left-hand side, the Y term on the left-hand side of the equal sign. To accomplish that, I'm gonna subtract five Y from both sides. Again, this goes back to what you learned in quarter one. Actually, you learned with uh, X on both sides, but the concept, with your second variable is still when you subtract a term from one side, you have to subtract that same term from the other side. So on the left-hand side, I have 10X minus 5Y equals 25. This is canceled. Okay, and now I want you to go ahead and pause the video and tell me what you would do next. Okay, if you said as step two states, write one equation on top of the other, then you're absolutely correct. Okay, so I'm gonna take that equation since I already have the 10X plus eight Y equals 12 written, it makes sense to write the second one directly underneath that so that I don't have to rewrite both of them. But notice how I'm very carefully lining up the terms. Notice how I have my X terms lined up and my Y terms lined up and my constant, that's a number by itself on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Those terms are all lined up. Okay, go ahead and hit pause. Tell me what you would do next. Okay, if you said step three, check to see if one of the variables has opposite coefficients, then you're absolutely correct. Now notice 10X and 10X, the second 10X is not opposite, it's the same. So notice the second part of step three says, if not, meaning if the variables don't have opposite coefficients, multiply one or both of the equations by a number that will give you the opposite coefficients. So to get the opposite coefficient of minus 10X, I need to take the second equation and multiply the whole thing by negative one. And notice how I put square brackets around because it's not only the left-hand side of the equation that I wanna multiply by negative one, it's the right-hand side too. So when I'm multiplying every term or distributing the negative one throughout, all I have to do is make that a negative, make that a plus, and make that a negative. Now I can get rid of that negative one because I've applied it to every term, what would you do next? Pause the video. 
if you said step four, add the equations to eliminate the variables, you're absolutely right to eliminate one of the variables. In this case, it's the X terms that cancel out or eliminate, hence the name elimination. 8Y plus 5Y equals 13Y. 12 minus 25 is equal to a negative 13. Divide both sides by 13. And I get the value of, I'm sorry, divide by 13. Y equals negative one. Pause the video and tell me what the next step would be. Okay, notice that the step I just did was step five, solve the equation. This will give you one value in the solution. So I'm gonna put it in the ordered pair. It's the Y value, so it comes second after the comma before the uh, in parentheses. So if you said the next step is step six, which is substitute this value into one of the equations to find the other value in the ordered pair, you're absolutely correct. So I'm gonna go back to the first equation. Again, it doesn't matter either one or which one I pick to begin with because I'm gonna check my answer with the other equation. Because remember, it satisfies both equations because the solution or the ordered pair is where the two lines intersect. If in fact we have a solution. In some problems, you're gonna end up with no solution or an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so 10X equals 25 plus five Y was my original equation. I'm gonna substitute the value that I've already found, which is Y. So I just copy the rest of the equation, but when I get to my Y term, I substitute the value of Y, which in this case is negative one. Or plug it in. Plug it in is another term you're gonna hear used a lot. So now I have 25 or 10 X equals 25 plus five times negative one is minus five. So combining like terms, I get 10 X equals 20. Divide both sides by 10. and I get X equals two. So I put that into my ordered pair. So it looks like two comma negative one is the point of intersection. But to make sure I'm going to take my second equation, which was 10 X plus eight Y equals 12. And I'm gonna plug in the value of X and the value of Y in for those terms in the equation and see if it works. So I'm asking myself is 10 times two plus eight times negative one is that, remember the equal sign with a question mark above it means, is it equal to 12? 10 times two is 20. Eight times negative one is negative eight. And lo and behold, 20 minus eight is equal to 12. And I give myself a nice, big, fat, happy face which you should get in the habit of doing that on your work because that's a good way for you to say, hey, it worked, I got the problem right. Now, if when you go and substitute your ordered pair into your second equation and it doesn't work, that means you made a mistake in your first, solving for your first 
variable and you need to go back through all of your steps and see where you made the mistake. That's why it's so important to write down every single step. And as you can see from my screen right now, every single elimination problem should take you at least a half a sheet of paper. So you need to ask yourself with that assignment that you did on the matching problems last week, did you have multiple sheets of paper that you filled out in your spiral notebook? If you did, job well done. If not, just learn that this is what we mean by showing your work and start doing it from now on.